Hi, Pisces. It's Abby. Welcome to your reading with me today. This is Rogue Pisces Tarot. All I do on this channel is Pisces-centered content. So you, if you are into that kind of thing, um, weekly readings, monthly readings, and then also kind of like in between timeless readings just to see whatever might pop up, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that stuff. This is going to be your Pisces weekly reading for September 16th to the 22nd of 2024. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's see what might be going on. I'm going to use tarot first. And then at the end, I'm going to pull tea leaf cards, seven of them for each day of the week. And then I'm also going to give you a money oracle and a law of attraction card. Maybe a love one too. We'll see. We'll see how long this takes. I don't want to be yammering on forever. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I do love to talk. If you've been here for a while, you know your girl likes to talk. Um, let me see. What's going on underneath all of this? We have King of Wands in the bottom of your deck. So to me, that shows me sort of the, the canvas that all of this week is happening on. There could be a fire sign person, an Aries, Leo, or a Sagittarius that is of some kind of importance. You could have something happening in your own birth chart. So if you happen to know where the Leo's, Aries, or Sagittarius houses are in your chart, there could be something going on in one of those for you. Or um, this could just be like a theme of leadership. The King of Wands is very much a sort of um, entrepreneurial you know, getting for, like facing forward, getting stuff done kind of energy. This is someone who takes charge, um, loves to learn, loves to build, loves to make things and isn't too hung up on doing things the traditional way, um, which is a really, really beautiful energy to see and be in and work with Pisces. So I like to see this for you this week. Okay, so what's going on? for you, what you're leaving behind, you have a very sort of leaving things behind thing, <laughs> sort of theme going on. I can tell in your mindset here, we have the Eight of Cups. This is a card of um, knowing that you're moving on mentally, emotionally from something, the things that used to satisfy you in your feelings um, and perhaps make you feel senses of accomplishment or happiness. It's not that they're bad. It's not that you hate them. It's just that they don't hit the, the way that they used to. Okay. It just doesn't feel as satisfying as it used to. It doesn't, it doesn't quite uh, do it for you anymore. So with the eight of cups showing up, especially in your mind space, this feels like this is something that you have already moved out of for a lot of you. Yeah, but the Ten of Swords, because there's an ending here that is just, it's so done and over with that you you know it fully. Sorry, you might hear my cat playing <laughs> in the background. Uh, in the every day, you are in manifestation mode. So some of you could be finding yourselves doing all kinds of different manifestation work. Not every kind works for everybody, right? Some people really love scripting. Some people uh, like writing down your life as, as you wish it. Um, some people like forms of journaling. Other people like things that are more ritualized, sort of like low-key kind of... Um, it can be even be like look like spell work, right? Where you kind of light a candle, you visualize, you sit there, you meditate, um, stuff like that. So it feels like in your everyday life, you could be bringing more of that kind of energy into, into your existence um, to try and sort of uh, direct the energy that you have and decide where you want to go with it. So you've decided to manifest something. For some of you, this has to do with a house. For others, it has to a house or housing of some kind, um, a new living situation. For others, this has to do with um, like a celebration of some sorts. You could be finding yourself in the sort of feeling where you want to be around people. Um, you want to be celebrating yourself and your achievements, other people's achievements. Uh, some of you could be joining a group of some sort. Yeah, there could also be things like um, you could have recently maybe attended something like a wedding or a graduation that you found particularly inspiring. And there was something about that that made you go, okay, I want to have this kind of milestone for myself and, or I want to have a version of this, you know, for myself. Maybe you saw a wedding and you're thinking like, oh, I want to get back on the dating scene. Maybe you went to someone's graduation or to just a, a party or a get together. And you just decided you're like, 
there's, I need to be more social. Like I feel like I need to get out there more. Um, yeah. And so this kind of led you into becoming more focused on your manifestation and becoming more intentional um, with what's happening around you and what you do in your day-to-day -day life. We have your queen of wands energy that's just been popping up for you like crazy. We had the king of wands on the bottom of your deck. So there could be uh, a couple type energy involved. Um, this really feels like for a lot of Pisces, there's been this theme of the Pisces who've been, I've been reading for on my channel, right? Whoever is most likely to come to this channel, I'm always asking for the most accurate information I can give them. King of Wands still somehow <laughs> at the bottom. Oh my goodness. So there's been a big theme of Pisces kind of like getting your, your groove back, your mojo back, your confidence back. And it's starting off in small ways like the way that she has this sort of spark happening at the bottom, like hand in her palm, right? She's in a pretty relaxed state, even though she's really excited, right? She's sitting on this nice little meditation chair and it's, it's like things are occurring to you and they're making you feel just sort of that sparky forward energy, which is probably why this leadership card, this sort of King of Wands energy is also showing up for you. I like this. So under the scenes, whatever it is that you're dealing with here, these thoughts of moving on and all of that, it's all happening so that you can get your yourself back into this sort of confident, um, forward moving sort of energy. We have the Knight of Swords. So it could be an air sign, a Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius of some sort. Uh, the Knight of Swords is a, is a quick moving energy. This is somebody who... Um, takes the available information that they have and they make very swift sort of action on it. Some of you could find yourself running towards a particular opportunity. Um, the confidence that you're getting, it's sort of like, you know what, I'm tired of thinking about it. I'm going to just do it. I'm tired of thinking about, about, you know, doing a nice thing for myself. I'm going to just book it and I'll figure it out. Right. It's, it's that kind of energy. I really, really like this. Okay. As we are in the present, in okay and your sort of day-to-day -day life as we're moving forward we have eight of swords so uh, analysis paralysis i feel like pisces can fall victim to this quite a bit and i think that part of it has to do with how good pisces is at seeing things from all different angles right pisces is sort of like the the karmic um like accumulation of all of the signs, right? We contain multitudes. We, we contain everything that all the other signs have been through and also have all of that intuition and that sort of like psychic ability. Um, even if it's just like, you know, feeling things really well in your gut, in your analytical mind, in your brain, Pisces, that can sometimes turn into looking at things from every possible angle and solution because it's so easy for you to visualize it. And sometimes that can get us stuck, okay? So just want you to be mindful of that. If there's any sort of like self-limiting beliefs. Um, one of my favorite depictions of this is actually the Rider Waite Smith because this it's a person standing in a in the middle of like there's a bunch of swords in the ground, but they're only like about this deep in the ground, right? Like they're only a little bit in the ground. They have sort of loose ties around them and they have a blindfold. And this person, it's sort of like when they're going by their feelings and their emotions, right? And they are, say, moving around in that space. There's some water on the ground. It's a little craggy, like it feels like a little unstable. They might step in that water and think, oh my God, if I step that way, I'm going to drown. But it's only a little puddle, right? And if they walk around a little bit, they might hit some of those swords and think, oh my God, I'm in a prison. I can't go anywhere, right? Like, look, there's stuff all around me. But if they were to stand where they are and you know shimmy off those little ties because they're very loose they're depicted as being loose for a reason and take off that blindfold then they could see with the like the actual evidence around them of what is actually happening rather than relying on their feelings and their emotions okay your feelings and your emotions are really really important but when they start ruling our thoughts and they start ruling our um like the action that we take or don't take, it's time to maybe reconsider things, okay? Um, you're thinking about the world energy. Now, this is a really beautiful sense of accomplishment as you're moving forward in the week. A little bit of fixed sign energy as well. 
So for some of you, it's like really thinking about the things that you want to accomplish and what's going to make you feel proud, what's going to make you feel like you can show something off. Um, and also like it will be like you stepping into a whole new place in existence. I feel like that's really what you're kind of seeing here because it's such a big concept. You have the fool underneath you, right? So subconsciously what's really happening, you're, if you're thinking about the world and the ending and the end of a cycle and perhaps about how good that's going to feel. Um, perhaps for some of you, it's about the world, right? The, the world as it is at large <laughs> that you're thinking about perhaps traveling, going somewhere, having an experience, um, closing a chapter of your life in some kind of way. The underlying energy you have is the fool. Okay, so while you might have the world on your mind, subconsciously, the whole reason for this is that you are ready for a fresh start. You're totally, totally ready for it. But in your day to day life, you might be worrying about the details, analyzing, telling yourself you have to get everything right before you make the first move. But I mean, the world comes to the fool energy and the fool I like to describe, I love this card's depiction of it because it's like a trust fall. It's like a trust fall with the universe. And you just sort of going, I don't know what's gonna be down here when I, when I hit that water, right? I don't know what's gonna be on the other side of this portal, but I know that I accomplished everything that I could in the last sort of chapter of things. And who knows what's next, right? Who knows? We have the world and the chariot. This is incredible. Okay, so especially, I think travel's a big deal for a lot of you out there, a big deal. Moving, going somewhere, even if it's something like, say you can't do like international travel or something, you might be wanting to do, go on like some road trips. Maybe there are some places or towns, um, museums, monuments, places around you that you're going like, man, I was born in this town and I haven't even really explored a whole lot of this place, right? Maybe your state or your province, uh, the country that you already live in. Maybe there's just like, I haven't really done a whole lot of that. And there's this feeling of your wings kind of like unfurling and you're getting this sort of sense of really wanting to, oh yeah, see, sorry, wings unfurling. You have the death card over here, which I think makes sense, right? It's all part of a larger transformation. So I feel like you're being, you're being really pulled in a sort of wanderlusty kind of way to different places. You really wanna move move on to a different time or place with the eight of swords you have the seven of cups okay so there you might be dealing with some illusions okay i feel like that's probably why the eight of swords pops out it tells us that we're analyzing too much and getting stuck in things um if you are picking things with your feelings rather than say your intuition um which i know it can be a little hard to differentiate things like anxiety is a feeling um i'm not worth it is a feeling you know those things are feelings whereas your instinct is like it will this choice lead me towards some sort of expansion towards some sort of newness towards some sort of i'm so curious like if i was reading a book about a person in my situation and they were faced with this choice and they're trying to pick which path it's like there's a maybe there's a safe path, maybe there's a dangerous path, maybe there's like the middle path, and there's a certain another path that kind of pops up that that's where their heart really wants to go. Okay, so I feel like that the illusions that you have around you um, could be dissolving right now, and I think a lot of you, especially with this magician energy, are putting a lot of work into into doing that and to dissolving illusions that you might be stuck in this period of time with the fool energy we have the two of swords a lot of you part of this sort of needing to get things started energy that you might not be completely aware of is that you're really really sick of being in a place where you're not making choices or you feel like the choices are made for you um, and that you don't have a whole lot of control over them this is, is kind of like the energy that I would say to someone if like the path is unclear, they're not really sure how it's going to go or what it's going to look like. And rather than sitting around and analyzing every single little, you know, detail, 
to, to figure it out before they move. They're going like, you know what? I'm just going to make the choice first and I'll figure it out. I'm going to take it as a part of the, as a part of the plan. Right. And this is like a calculated risk. You don't have to know everything about it. Um, but it's, it's like, I'm just going to make the choice. I'm sick of not choosing. I'm sick. I'm sick of feeling like it's all being chosen for me. Right. And that I have no control. Like that I'm, I'm, un I'm unsure. And I don't know, like if I had more information, I would actually do it. And if I keep telling myself that I'm not making the choice, because if I had more information, I would actually do it. We can get stuck in research mode forever, right? Forever. Um, so it's, yeah, I feel like that's part of why this full energy is here. It's just kind of like leap and the net will appear, baby. Leap and the net will appear. Okay. And then as we're moving forward through the week, we have the tower, the moon, and the death card. So all major arcanas. Um, near the end of the week, as you're moving into the week of the 23rd. So <laughs> you are with the moon card, I can tell that this is you really figuring out hard what your instincts are telling you. Okay, you're listening to your intuition, you're listening to your spirituality. Um, you could also be doing some work around like the full or the new moons that are coming up this month. Um, I believe coming up in, I think it's the 27th. I'm not sure. I, I would have to check. The, there is a, a moon in Pisces. Give me one check. I have an, I have an app. Let me check one second. Hi, sorry. It wasn't the seven. It wasn't the 27th. It's the 17th. So at the beginning of this week, um, there is, could be possibly why the magician is there. Um, there's a full moon in Pisces, which I think also has um, some eclipse qualities to it as well that could be important to you. Let's take a look. I want to see what's going on here. Ah, nine of swords. Okay. So this to me is like part of the reason why you're really tapping into your instincts, your higher like intuition, your psychic energy, you could be trying to do some sort of new moon ritual or full moon ritual or something like that for yourself is that there has now that you've been trying to make a whole bunch of choices you're trying to like bust up these illusions you know that there's a goal in mind that you have there could be a sense of anxiety that comes over you where it's almost like you the nine of swords to me feels like it can be a a card of waking up in a nightmare right blah um some of you could have poor sleep um, things like that. This card tends to show itself to me as like waking up with this sort of anxious feeling of like all of the sudden you might have felt sort of cloudy when you went to bed and then you wake up and you have like every single thing like it's laid out in front of you. You could see what needs to happen but it's overwhelming in a way because it's like, oh my gosh, there's so many steps to get where I want to go with this, right? There's so many steps to take care of this. Um, I feel like with this card in particular, the art where we have the focus on that one white bird, it's that just to me says that there's one thing that is will stick out to you as being the most actionable thing. Okay, that it's like, okay, yes, you sat down and you went, maybe you want to plan a trip across the world, or maybe you want to look for a new job, maybe you want to start school, maybe you want to do whatever. And you wake up in the middle of the night going like, oh, shoot, like, how am I going to make all of this happen? There's so many steps to it. Like, I can see them, the steps are there, but it's just the weight of them is making me feel in my mind space, like a little burdened, okay, a little anxious, little burdened. One step in particular is going to one detail or step of this process is going to stand out to you in a way where you're like, that is the most actionable, achievable thing that I can do first. And so I feel like what this is telling you is the reason that that is sticking out to you is because if you do that thing, it will get you started and get the ball rolling, okay? And alleviate a lot of those senses of like anxiety and overwhelm. In your mind space, you have the tower, okay? so. For some of you, there could be a surprise. There could be a way of thinking or being that is a surprise to you that is coming up nearer the end of the week as you're moving into the week coming. Um, it's a card of like a teardown, right? There could be a little bit of you just kind of pulling out all of the stuff that doesn't work anymore, right? You're just pulling it out. You're going like, this stuff doesn't work. 
you already have this idea of moving on with the eight of cups, the world, the chariot, the, the 10 of swords. Like this is a very much in your mind, someone who is determined on to move on and they know that that's what's going to happen. There could be an epiphany also that you get that makes you sit there and realize, oh, this is why, this is why I've never maybe taken a certain kind of risk, or this is why I've limited myself to dating certain kinds of people. This is the thing underneath it. And all of the sort of um, illusions and all of the things that you might have built around it, around that idea or that singular belief will get knocked down, okay, in your mind space. With the seven of wands, beautiful. Okay, so this shows me that even though you're surprised by this and this is something that might be like kind of uncomfortable it's still you're in a place of power and you're in a place of advantage you're kind of untouchable you're going to choose what you let through this feels like for some of you you might be meditating on the the messages that you're getting you might be thinking about them journaling about them soul searching about them right and going like okay so yes this was a shock Yes, this sort of realization is making me go like, oh man, all this, all these other choices I've made, all these other things that I've done, they are based on this maybe false belief or this thing that happened. Um, maybe it was a belief you even built in childhood or whatever, who knows, right? But then you're like, no, I can, I can deal with it and I can make it, I can still rise above this, you know, and maintain my dignity and I can work with this. I can work through this and you can rise to the occasion. Underneath you, what's happening subconsciously is the death card, the rebirth card. So, I mean, part of why this fool energy is here for you is because there's a whole new you that is happening right now. And I feel like a number of you are probably, especially with this, the, the way that the cards have come out, have realized that it's not even just that you're going into a new chapter of life. It's that there's a, a new version of yourself that is sort of requiring the spotlight right now. It's trying to emerge and you're slowly taking the steps to get yourself there to help that to happen. With the 10 of pentacles, I love this. So for a lot of you, this could have to do with themes of commitment, right? You could be changing the way that you look at things like commitment or family. You could be changing the ways that you look at things, themes of abundance or legacy, the work that you're going to leave behind, what you're going to be known for, right? Um, all of that judgment is at the bottom of your deck right now. So that shows me this beautiful, just sort of like feeling your calling, right? Your spirit just being called up to do whatever it needs to do, right? So there's, and the 10 of pentacles can also be a kind of a, pentacles can be sort of a traditional sort of energy. So it could even be that where you're like, I always thought that what I really wanted was to have a certain lifestyle or a certain um, occupation, a certain kind of family structure, a certain kind of whatever. And now that's all being kind of changed. Thanks, baby. <laughs> She's mad at me because I like tried to block off her entry from that point with like all of my deck boxes. <laughs> And so she was like, while I was doing the reading, she's like circling around me, circling around the table, trying to find a way to like jump on. And so, yeah, she just decided to just Leroy Jenkins it. Um, okay, so now we're going to do your oracles. If you're not interested in oracles, that's cool. You don't have to stay here. Um, but if you are into that, we can take a look. So these are tea leaf cards. They might be relevant to you. They might not. I'm going to pull one for every day of the week. Um, they may not happen in that order for you, but they might just be extra confirmations. We have the egg that says success assured with good plans and hard work. We have the ear saying good news this week. We have, ooh, the tiger saying doing something risky and taking a chance. I mean, I said it, didn't I? We have the rooster. This is an arrogant, boastful person that you should not cross. Okay, so maybe a little bit of a warning for some of you to be mindful about the people who are around you. Usually with someone who's like that, it says don't cross them. Usually you can just ignore them. Um, there's a technique used with like... Um, 
people who are very full of themselves. I don't want, I don't like to use the word narcissist because I feel like it just gets overused, right? Um, but where they call it gray rocking, where you, if someone tries to bait you or if someone tries to, um, you know, they're just being boastful, they're being arrogant, they're being, you know, they're petty and they're whatever, to just give them like the blandest answer you can think of. When someone's just like, well, I haven't heard from you in a long time. To just be like, yeah, you haven't. And then just let it hang, right? <laughs> and like, and just not, you know, entertain, not make excuses, not go on about what's been going on with you because then that just opens it up to more, more stuff, right? Tends to work pretty well, I find. We have the bridge. So this says successfully overcoming a problem. I really like this. I'm also drawn to how this seven of cups energy, there is like a little ladder on this card so this feels like if there is something you need to overcome this week pisces um yeah it's, you could very well have some very good success with it okay we're at five so this is six the eye that says psychic ability and trust your intuition right over the moon card beautiful and then we have chain and this is chain of events that will affect your life. Okay, so this feels like this could possibly be linked to whatever realization you make here. Yeah, baby, just jump. There you go. <laughs> okay, and is this a Law of Attraction deck? Yes, I'm going to give you one from the Law of Attraction deck. What do the Pisces who are watching, what is a Law of Attraction principle that might be helpful to them this week? Who this? Oh, it says beliefs come true. So that says your beliefs create your reality, recognize and change your emotions, reprogram your subconscious mind. So some of you might be finding like, yeah, there's the towers often I find a card when stuff like this happens, right? There's subconscious beliefs, stuff that's in there that we don't realize is the reason why we've been doing things the way that we have. Um, and then figuring out like, oh, at the heart of it, it's because I believe like, you know, love is too risky, or I believe I'm not smart enough to have a business, or I'm, I believe ultimately this, that, or the other, right? Sorry. <laughs> My cat, she's just like super hyper right now. She gets jealous sometimes when I'm doing readings, and she just almost bailed on her cat tree. She's trying to get attention. Okay, so here's a money card for you this week, Pisces. Ooh, legal. Okay, so it says you might have to take care of some legal matters related to financial issues. You could receive money from some kind of legal matter, and also that it's a good time to handle any legal matters involving money. Okay, so if you have taxes, if there's something that you need to pay for, um, might be a good time to take a look at it. I'm going to do a love card also as we close. So I feel like that covers a lot of stuff pretty comprehensive I think what do the Pisces who are watching need to see or here to have their best week possible ooh coffin yeah endings bring new beginnings growth change liberation and transition yeah so if some of you are dealing with or still processing the end of a relationship perhaps is letting you know that something else is in the works that there's a sense of like liberation that's available to you and this death card that's kind of underneath the surface here as well. Okay, Pisces, that's what I got for you for the week of the 16th to the 22nd, 2024. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, if you want to find me again, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. I was looking at my analytics and I think like only 16%, like one six percent of people have the notifications turned on. And I've been, I've, I've been back active now for a while um, after I had a bit of a hiatus and I've had people been asking like, Oh my God, where you have you been? I haven't seen you in like years even. And I'm like, no, I'm still here. I think YouTube sometimes takes the notifications off for some reason. So if you have them like double check, you know, um, sometimes you can even hit subscribe. Um, if you're already subscribed, you can hit it so that it turns red again and then resubscribe. Sometimes that'll help reset it.
or you can turn off notifications and turn them back on. That kind of thing might be helpful to you. Okay, guys, um, lots of love, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.